On 26th of November 2022, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket departed from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida to deliver supplies to the International Space Station. Among the 7,700 pounds of cargo on board, it is safe to say that the smallest delivery came inside this box. This is the story of how plastic-eating bacteria became the International Space Station's newest resident. The predecessor of this plastic-eating bacteria was first discovered by Japanese scientists in 2016 on a plastic recycling site in Osaka. The bacteria they found, called Ideonella sakaiensis, was feasting on PET, a type of plastic most commonly used to make plastic bottles as well as some food packaging. The bacteria couldn't freely eat any other types of plastic, and so, at the time, it didn't seem like a feasible fix to plastic pollution. But that's not the end of the story. The discovery marked the beginning of scientific efforts to develop ways in which the enzymes could consume multiple types of plastic and do it fast. One of these projects was developed by the scientists you see on screen. It is an interdisciplinary collaboration whose latest move was to shoot the bacteria into space. The project's end goal is not to have the bacteria eat up all the plastic, but to go a step further and upcycle it. Here's how it works. So there's two pieces of biotechnology contained in this payload. The first is an enzyme. So an enzyme is a protein that catalyzes a biochemical reaction. So in this case, we have an enzyme called PETASE and it takes solid polyethylene terephthalate, so the polymer, and converts it into monomers. So what the enzyme does here is a type of deconstruction. It takes a piece of plastic and eats it down to its building blocks. The second piece is the bacteria. And so if you can envision wanting to use waste plastics for more than just what you started with, you can use a bacteria to convert those molecular building blocks released from polyethylene terephthalate into anything you can imagine. And so in this case, we're taking it to a nylon precursor. So we've engineered a soil bacteria. It's called Pseudomonas putida. Hold on, this is a really common type of bacteria. If you go into your backyard and scoop out some dirt, the chances are you'll be holding a bunch of it in your hands. But what Ali and her team have done here is to take the bacteria and alter its DNA so that it can process that specific type of plastic eating enzyme. And so essentially we've created a living um, bio factory where many hundreds of enzymes are being produced that can catalyze a whole metabolic network. And in this case, the network we've created is taking the precursor, the, the deconstructed polyethylene terephthalate and turning it into a precursor for nylon. Another thing to know about this bacteria is that it's harmless. As it already exists in the soil and even in our human bodies, it doesn't really pose danger in case of a leak into the environment, which is usually one of the biggest concerns when we talk about bioengineering bacteria. We've taken genes that are already in soil bacteria and just combined them into one soil bacteria. There's no new function. It was already present just in, in two separate bacteria. And so these are both BSL-1, which means the lowest biosafety level, like don't eat it, but like those types of bacteria are already part of our body. And so these are not things to be scared of. And so in terms of leakage into the environment, we certainly do not want that to happen. Um, but if it should happen, we wouldn't expect any adverse effect because there's no sort of like exogenous function being introduced into the bacteria. And here comes the coolest part. Why are we sending this plastic eating bacteria into space instead of developing it here on Earth? So the enzyme is really well studied. The bacteria is really well studied. We know these systems work on Earth. There are areas that we want to improve. And so there's sort of like twofold um, goals for this experiment in terms of the biology. One is to understand how the system works in spaceflight. And so that means in microgravity and with increased radiation. So for example, the interfacial biocatalysis between the enzyme and the plastic, when there's no gravity, we don't know what that looks like. And we don't know what type of mutations or what phenotypes we might see from the bacteria in spaceflight um, that we don't see on Earth. This is not the first time scientists have cultured bacteria in space to see how its compounds may change outside of Earth. In 2013, an experiment sent biofilms found in nature and inside the human body to space 
to study whether the bacteria can develop harmful effects in non-terrestrial environments. This time around, scientists are trying to find out whether the bacteria can help them reach sustainability in space as well as on Earth. And just like on Earth, the supply chain is the first thing you want to cut. If you think about a long-term space journey, you cannot just keep sending things over like Amazon packages. So instead, how can we utilize materials in the environment that is already there? In space contest, we actually put things in plastic everywhere. Like the food, you cannot serve it in like a dish because it's gonna float. Because of that, on, on the flip side, we actually have a lot of waste for packaging, etc. But is it possible to um, upcycle those materials and turn them into something more useful, still in the rum um, plastic, but more uh, useful in terms of its value. And we envision that in the future when astronauts, you know, as they travel deeper into space, um, they need to do what we call um, in-situ resource utilization. So using the material that already exists there, in this case, plastic waste, um, to upcycle into new material and allow the astronaut or, you know, all the human living into space um, to be able to recycle material into new and more beneficial uh, uh, products at the end. Here's how this works. The first thing to know is that the bacteria is frozen before it's sent out to space. Once it makes it safely into the International Space Station, the astronauts will connect with the scientists here on Earth. First thing we're gonna do is um, to revive the bacteria and then we pump revival media, which is gross media, and almost like water, and then all these bacteria and call back to life and then we can start experiment. And through the duration of 30 days, we keep providing new uh, nutrition to the bacteria, monitor their growth, and then pumping them out for different kind of collections so we can preserve data as it is going. And then later on, when we connect them back uh, in the uh, laboratory on the ground, we can observe what had happened at different stages of the experiment. This module also contain um, uh, sensors that will measure uh, environmental parameters like temperature, humidity, and also the optical density of the cell that we can see if the microbes, you know, are growing and, you know, uh, are doing well in space. And, um, you know, one of the exciting part of this is that the system that we developed here is fully automated. After it's you know, integrated into the space station, you know, we can send a command and the experiment will execute um, automatically for the, ne for the next 30 days, which is the, the duration of our payload. And we hope that our system will become, you know, an open source platform and that auto researchers can use to, you know, adapt for their own experiment to study auto biological um, process in space biological capability will enable um, space flight and astronaut to be able to do things um, that they never uh, be able to do before. And I think the, the, the era of bio biotech in space is just very exciting. And we hope that our payload will contribute to that effort. But there's still a long way to go before this becomes a reality. So this is really a technology demonstration project. So as a way to showcase what is capable and what can be done, in the space station, we need to be super careful about the kind of materials we use and we have to recycle and upcycle them. But at the same time, our Earth is just a bigger space station. And so the same method and same mentality we are applying and using space exploration as a storytelling platform is something that we really want to apply the story back to Earth. To me, a big part of this experiment is just seeing how these new components perform um, and where, you know, where they break. If they break, then that's a learning experience too, so that the next iteration gets one step closer to success. And at the end of the day, we are, I think for the first time, showing plastic circularity in lower Earth orbit. And so if it doesn't work out perfectly, I don't think that, that we should feel bad about that. I think this is, um, we're going to learn a ton no matter what happens.